Okay guys, uh, today's video is going to be on telephones, uh, both analog and digital. And I'm going to go over the theory of operation and, uh, and how to test them with, uh, with equipment. Um, I'm going to start off with the uh, analog and um, just wanted to show you my basic setup here. I have a regular uh, uh, um, POTS telephone, um, your standard princess kind of phone and um, I have uh, a voltmeter and um, uh, an ammeter set up to uh, show the voltages uh, on the phone when we go through the, uh, the calling and uh, uh, dialing. So um, uh, start off with uh, on the analog let me pull up the, um, the diagram and uh, I want to go over the theory of operation real quick and then we'll get into the practical testing uh, using the uh, using the uh, the fluke meters there. Um, I want to start off with um, uh, kind of an overview of the circuit. Uh, it's it's really uh, a real simple uh, series uh, circuit using the two wires coming from the phone office here. Um, they uh, have a 48 volt uh, battery um, attached to it. And they also have a, uh, a an off hook uh, sensing uh, resistor here. Uh, when the uh, telephone on the other side comes off hook, it completes a series circuit along these two wires, causing current to flow, DC current. And when the um, the current goes through this resistor, it causes a voltage drop, which uh, wakes up the PBX over here uh, to let let it know that the uh, the person uh, wants to uh, make a telephone call. So um, uh, just to go through the uh, motions here on your making call to start off with the handset's lifted creating a DC current flow. Um, so when the, the, it sees the voltage here uh, the PBX senses it and then sends a dial tone as a courtesy to the user here to let them know okay I'm ready for your, uh, your dialing. Um, and then the um, when the user here starts uh, with the very first uh, DTMF uh, digit coming back uh, and the PBX decodes it and turns off the uh, dial tone and waits for the rest of the digits to come uh, before completing the dial and then um, once you know all the, the sequence of uh, digits is uh, entered in and they're in the correct order then it goes ahead and completes the dial um, Looking at the um, um, the reverse side of it, um, when the uh, call comes in from the outside world, uh, it rings in here to the central office that then connects to your two wires, and the uh, the phone company puts a uh, uh, 20 hertz, 90 volt signal uh, ringing uh, voltage, the, the classic American ringing voltage, that goes down, and even though your phone is off hook. Uh, or, or on hook I should say uh, it's got a couple capacitors in it that allow the uh, the AC voltage to go through and and ring uh, so there's no there's no uh, DC current flow but um, uh, your ringer still works and as soon as you come off hook with it uh, the voltage once again is generated over here at the off hook detect and the uh, the, the PBX stops the uh, ringing voltage and it goes ahead and connects your uh, your audio uh, uh, to, to the incoming party's audio and you uh, you know you have your phone call um, on both sides of the uh, of the system here uh, on the on the network side it does break it is actually a four wire uh, so two wires handle transmit audio and the other two wires handles receive but they uh, use a hybrid to get that down to two wires and then at the other end here same thing it comes in uh, just on two wires but then it, it'll go into this um, hybrid to split it out so that the uh, uh, the microphone and uh, earpiece are on separate uh, connections here so that's how they they share this uh, the same two wires um, and of course the, uh, the the electronics in the phone the DTMF encoder it needs um, 
it needs voltage in order to run. So uh, some of this, when it, when it goes off hook, some of the voltage is, is dropped across the, uh, the phone here, and that allows enough uh, electricity to run all the internal uh, circuits, and we'll see how that works here in just a second. So um, that's, the, uh, that's the basic uh, back and forth. Uh, you can look at that and study that, but uh, um, I'll go ahead and um, switch over to the, uh, the live shot here. And we'll go ahead and do a, a practical uh, test. First, we're going to make a call, and what uh, um, what we're going to see is when I come off hook, that the voltage across the line is going to drop, and then I'm also going to generate uh, DC current when I do that. So let me come off hook. You'll see the voltage goes all the way down to five volts, so about 5.8. So that's what's dropping across the the, the phone right now. So the internal uh, uh, electronics in the DTMF encoder here it's got five volts to work with and as you can see it's drawing and let me hang that up uh, and reset it here it was drawing um, uh, 20 28 milliamps so that's the um, um, amount of current that's going uh, across to the the central office there and going through their uh, off hook detect so like I said, when when I when I let go of my thumb here and I release the, uh, the off hook, um, the current flows, and then the the phone company knows to put dial tone on here. So I'll go ahead and release, and I'll do some DTMF uh, to show you the uh, um, uh, the level uh, that we get there. That we, we it doesn't really use hardly any more electricity uh, DC wise. I was kind of curious to see that, um, but um, I'll go ahead and call my uh, cell phone here, and we'll uh, complete the call, and I'll get some uh, audio measurements when we're doing that. So let me uh, come off hook here, and I'll go. Okay. And then, uh, okay, now we got, we're completed. And if I come over here and go speaker, test one, two. Okay, let me turn that off. Okay, so uh, the call is up and going right now. So when you can see where the phone is using six volts DC approximately, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the AC uh, volts and we can uh, get a measure of the audio. So I'll do a nice loud four here and you'll see we'll get up uh, about two volts. Uh, four and um, that gives you an indication of the uh, the audio level now if I come over here on my uh, on my cell phone that I just called I can do the same thing testing one two three four and you can see I don't have hardly as uh, much um, uh, sound coming in on my cell phone as I do that I generate locally here so um, and if I do a, a DTMF I get 0.7 so that's just a steady DTMF so this is just kind of giving you the idea of the audio levels uh, involved uh, they're like typical audio levels and um, and once again I'll go back over here and you can see I'm only six volts so I'm gonna go ahead and hang up now and come over here up on my cell phone and now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the reverse I'm going to call the phone so uh, when it's when it's calling it's going to use the AC voltage like I said 90 volts AC so let's flip over there and let's um, give the uh, the phone a call and it's ringing and you can see the uh, you know, it should uh, turn the ringer on so that uh, it's obvious what's going on. So you see it ringing, and you see as it as it's ringing, you'll get the 90 volts coming in, and this is the one that'll actually shock you. It'll give you a really good shock. It'll it'll knock you down. So that's the only part about the things being dangerous. And I'll flip over here to the frequency. You'll see it's uh, coming in right at. Uh, at 20 hertz so here's my uh, audio come back on the phone for 
coming back on the uh, on the cell phone and that's your um, that's your basic kind of two-way back and forth let me hang that up see our volts AC goes to zero and our DC voltage is back to its normal so that's a good um, a good representation of a plain old telephone system um, a phone at work uh, these values are really typical you can see variations that some are like you'll see it floating at closer to 50 volts and to 48 um, other ones um, you know uh, as far as drawing the current each phone is a little bit unique as far as how much current it will draw when it comes off hook and this also helps you to understand how there can only be a limited number of phones hooked up in parallel before the voltage drop gets to be so low that it's not enough to to ring and to drive all the phones so all right um, that about covers the analog side of it now I'm going to change gears here and uh, switch over to the uh, digital side and uh, we'll go from there stand by all right um, we're now over at the uh, digital phone um, this is a Unify Open Stage 40. It's a um, uh, very typical uh, office digital digital office phone. Um, it works uh, off the Ethernet, and um, it is uh, uses what's called SIP uh, session initiation protocol to uh, get its phone calls going back and forth, and um, um, it normally connects uh, straight to a switch and it would be uh, really hard to show you any of the uh, traffic back and forth because it's uh, um, it's it's uh, it's 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 not broadcast it's an individual the, this is more or less a computer it's got its own IP address so all the the, the Ethernet traffic back and forth is is individualized to this phone so we're going to uh, I'm going to use a um, a Netgear uh, old school hub to uh, to do some uh, port sniffing to show you uh, on Wireshark what the uh, traffic going back and forth looks like uh, so you get an idea of uh, how this thing's working um, but bottom line is it is it's like any other kind of uh, internet audio device it samples the uh, the audio it's using a, um, a codec of G711 and uh, and then digitizes those uh, that uh, that digital audio and packetizes it uh, to send across the Ethernet and the internet over to its server, where it uh, then gets connected onto the AT&T system to uh, uh, complete the phone call and go the rest of the uh, journey. So um, this is the physical setup. Like I said, I just uh, I have the hub on there so we can be able to see the. Uh, the packets on Wireshark. So let me go ahead and uh, get uh, Wireshark pulled up. Okay, guys, uh, real quick before I go into the Wireshark, just wanted to show you this uh, diagram, and uh, it um, it shows a typical uh, setup with uh, a digital telephone system, where you have uh, your phones uh, out here in the world, and they're going to be talking to a server over here your SIP server and this SIP server will also have a gateway uh, device to connect it to the PSTN over here which is the uh, public switch telephone network uh, um, aka AT&T system um, so uh, this is a like I said just a really good example showing you the Ethernet um, uh, style that they use here and that this phone is essentially uh, a lot more computer than it than it is a phone so just keep that in mind um, but let me go ahead and pull up uh, Wireshark and uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new session and um, um, then I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, phone and we'll uh, get a, 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 a packet capture there and I'll show you how that works so I'm calling my my digital phone with my cell phone as I pick up here testing one two three four 
you'll uh, you'll see all my traffic here uh, going across I'm uh, 0.22 and my SFP server is 0.245 so this is a test test one two three four from the phone side so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang up and we'll stop the capture and I just wanted to go back up here to some of the the heart of the uh, call here and uh, you'll be able to see um, so this is a typical uh, audio packet uh, coming across uh, it's it's coming from my phone which is dot two two and it's going to the uh, SIP server which is dot two four five and it's a RTP protocol and it's using the, it's using the G711 codec with um, with the MULA um, flavor and um, uh, um, Wireshark has a cool feature on it for the um, for telephone you can go over here to telephony and pull up your RTP and then RTP streams and you'll see the one uh, from it's recording uh, in both directions cause one one packet streams leaving and the other packet streams coming in so let's look at the one that's leaving that's the one that I did here and you can analyze it and bring it up and it's got a cool thing here where you can actually play it uh, so you're essentially doing a recording here and let me put it uh, over to the speakers so that we can hear it and I'll play it and you'll see uh, you'll see how it works Testing one two three four. You'll uh, you'll see all my traffic here uh, going across. I'm point two two, and my SFP server is point two four five. So this is test test one two three four from the phone side. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hang up. All right, let me stop that. And um, and there you go. You can see uh, it's got a lot of uh, crazy options that it can do and um, uh, things that, uh, uh, that you can get into. And there's a lot of videos on, on doing the uh, Wireshark. But just wanted to show you how it worked and how different it was from the, um, the analog phone. And how they have almost nothing in common except at the handset cord. So keep that in mind while you're... Uh, doing your troubleshooting and uh, and your wiring your jacks and all that good stuff so all right hope that helps and uh, we'll talk to you soon